Oh, that looks so good. If Cozy had a dish, this would be its mascot. So that look incredible. Saucy, meaty, comforting, cheesy. Oh, it's that time of year where we're looking for some good comfort food and I've got the perfect recipe today. Hash brown casserole shepherd's pie. This is actually Cracker Barrel's newest addition to their fall menu. And I just thought we'd recreate it because it sounds too good to be true. Everyone's making pot roast this time of year. And this is my message to you for next time that you do make it to get a big one, make double. Just be sure you have leftovers so you can make this. The reason why I think you should start this with leftover pot roast is because the whole dish would seem too overwhelming if you made the pot roast and then made this. So I went ahead and made my pot roast and here's how I did it. This is my super easy pot roast. Start with a chuck roast and then season it well with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Sear that on all sides and a little bit of oil until it's really crusty. Take it out and then add in an onion, some celery, carrots, a little more salt and pepper, and then cook that down. And you'll notice how it pulls the flavor off the bottom of the pan. At this point, add in a couple tablespoons of butter, a couple tablespoons of flour, stir that around and then deglaze it with some water. And then I like to use bouillon paste. You could also use a bouillon cube or you could just use beef stock, whatever you want. Just stir that around until it's all incorporated and then it's gonna to start to thicken. Add in a couple tablespoons of tomato paste, a little Worcestershire and two bay leaves and you're good to go. Bring this up to a simmer and then just cover it, throw it in the oven for about 350 for about an hour and then 325 for another hour and a half or so. And then here's what you're left with. Super tender, super flavorful. All that gravy has concentrated in there. Our veggies are ready to go. That's one of the main components. The other is the hash brown casserole. I'll whip that up for you just in case you forgot. You've seen me make this before. You can use whatever hash brown casserole recipe is your favorite, or we will link one below. I'll just make it again because it's one of my favorite indulgences of all time. And then some cream of chicken and a little bit of sour cream, a stick of melted butter, a little bit of diced onion. You could also use the minced dried onion here and then some cheddar cheese. I'm gonna season it up with salt and pepper, even though that might not be in the recipe. And it's as easy as that. It's okay if your hash browns are still mostly frozen as long as they're separated. What I love in the description is that it said griddled hash brown casserole. So it makes like a crispy crust of the hash brown casserole and everything else is like ready made. I will say that one portion that I ordered was about 20 bucks. But if you are buying a chuck roast and you can get two meals out of it, thank for your buck, you know what I mean? Okay, once that is all good mixed, it just goes into a casserole dish. A lot of potatoes. Spread it out, I'm gonna top it with a little more cheese and then just bake it. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour, especially when you're starting with mostly frozen hash browns. Because my research is so thorough, I thought I would order one from Cracker Barrel so we can see what we're working with. This right here is 20 bucks. Now it is very hearty portion, but if, I, if this is what I wanted to serve my family, I'd have to order at least two of them. So here's the hash brown griddled crust. So it's just a very thin layer of hash browns. I do love the crust. It just kind of adds a different texture and I like that it's made with pot roast. But you know how I do. I just gotta do like one better, you know? Okay, so we've got our hash browns going, our pot roast, this is our pretend leftover pot roast. So I'm gonna take the meat out. And then you've got your leftover gravy. If you don't have a lot of gravy left, you can just buy like some store-bought gravy. Mine is there and it's super thick. I'm gonna add in a little beef broth just to thin mine out a little bit. And this is when you can add in your frozen peas. Frozen peas take like two seconds to cook. Now mine is still warm. You can heat your gravy back up just to warm your peas through a little bit, but they'll finish cooking in the oven. And that is our base for our shepherd's pie. And then I'm gonna cut my pot roast into chunks. Ooh, this is so tender. I'm just gonna kind of cut it into hearty chunks because that's the way they have it. Look at that. This is just a simple version. You can use whatever pot roast recipe you like. Okay, then I'm gonna add in our pot roast. 
I always use my leftover pot roast. I'll simmer it down in tomato sauce and make like a hearty ragu or shred it up for sandwiches or tacos. This just gives you another something different to do with your pot roast. It just makes the pot roast a lot more versatile. Oh, that looks so good. Looks just so good. We've made the pot roast. That's good to go. We've made our hash brown casserole. That's good to go. You know, that's all the real cooking we're gonna do. I'm taking a shortcut for the base with mashed potatoes that are already made. I'm just going straight in to my cast iron skillet. You want enough mashed potatoes to cover whatever vessel you're using. For me, it's about one and a half of those containers or about four cups if you're using homemade. Then goes our hot roast mixture. You can see the flavor, the comfort, the deliciousness. Mmm. Could stop there, but why when you can make a hash brown crust? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press our leftover hash brown casserole with some extra cheese into a large nonstick skillet, big enough to cover the top. And this one's not gonna be big enough. Come on, pan. That should do it. That should do it. So let's just cook it up. Let's make our hash brown crust. So it has enough butter and cheese in it. You shouldn't need anything as long as you're using a good nonstick skillet. Put some extra cheese down and then I'm going in with my hash brown casserole. Just kind of press it into a super thin layer. Theirs is really thin, so just as thin as you can get it. Also, it doesn't have to be perfect. Craggly edges are probably more what you want. So I'm just kind of bringing it together and then I'm gonna crank the heat up and let it get crispy. Okay, look at this. Get up under there. Do you see that? That is a cheesy, crusty deliciousness. We're just gonna slide it right on top. Oh, craggly bits. It's gonna be good. Now I'm gonna top it with even more cheese, just like they have it. Okay, so now when it goes into the oven, I'm gonna do 400 degrees until it's all good and bubbly, and then I'm gonna turn on the broiler to crisp up that top. Oh, here we go. Oh, Cracker Barrel, thank you for the idea. Oh my gosh, this looks so dang good. If Cozy had a dish, this would be its mascot. Now in the picture, they top this with sour cream. First I thought that sounded a little weird. However, with the hash brown crust, it kind of makes sense like a loaded potato on top. Yes. So that's how I'll serve it up. Oh my goodness, might be. One of the best shepherd's pies I've ever made. Look at that. It's starting to look incredible. Saucy, meaty, comforty, cheesy. That hash brown crust. Oh, little dollop how they do it. And some green onion. Nailed it. And in for the perfect bite. Gotta get a little crusty bit first. Oh my God. It's so rich. So much flavor, but that little salty, cheesy hash brown crust with the creamy mashed potatoes, like double the carb. And then you get your gravy all in one bite, y'all. Mm. One of the best things I've made in a minute. Y'all gotta make this. Don't even worry about going to Cracker Barrel with all the travelers. Just make it at home. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. For what it's worth, our hash brown casserole. You saw how easy that was to put together. Look how delicious that looks.